Dynasty Week continues. We're going to talk about some sleepers in our rookie drafts. We're going to talk about some trades and what players are worth what picks. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Thursday, May 12th. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back again. Dynasty Week continues. Going to be talking some rookie sleepers, some trades, some dynasty trade talk, some news, a little bit news. A little bit news. We got a little bit? Yeah, just a little bit. The judge is here. How you doing there, Brooksy? Excellent. Still incredibly wealthy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Convincing. Um, excited to be with you all. We appreciate you tuning into the show. Twitter at the FF Ballers, the communities over there at jointhefoot.com. At the top here, I want to say thank you to so many awesome human beings who have purchased tickets to our recently announced live shows in Detroit, Los Angeles, and Phoenix. They are approaching sellout Ville. Selling mm-hmm. uh, like hotcakes. Hotcakes must sell very well. I, they, yeah. they are very popular when you sell them openly. That's they're, the they don't do that a lot. That's why they sell so quickly. They're far more popular than cold cakes. True. I do love a cold cake. A cold though. cake's uh, great though. I imagine that when you say hot cake, you're referring to a flapjack or a pancake. <laughs> yeah, a pancake, right? Yeah. Where I mean, they, I don't want to get lost on the idiom origin here, but well, that's where this is the best place to be. But I mean, somebody at some point sold hotcakes in an open market, and yes. they just. Sold quickly. Might have Someone? been like a stand, like a lemonade stand. Yeah. If, if if you're out there and there's like out on the block, you know, like out on the hot block. dogs. Out on the block. Just yeah. like you got the hot dogs out there right. and everything. If you had fresh pancakes, you're telling me mm. you wouldn't hit that thing up on I your just, way to work? I mean, I don't know. When you when you cook up a, a hot cake, it can't really sit in the open air that long. I mean, these got to be right off the griddle. That's oh, why they, in Arizona, though. That's why they sell like hot cakes. But the, the real news here is that for everyone who... Uh, has not yet got tickets. If you're wanting to come see us in Detroit, in LA, in Phoenix, you're going to need to do it now. Yeah. You're, you're going to need to go buy those tickets now at ballerslive.com. Yep. If you don't remember, then we'll miss you. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun to get back out on the road and to you know, live events have such a good energy and we get to meet so many incredible human beings. You might Witness me blow out an ACL as well, I jump off a stage. That's, yeah, that's, that's like the odd. The betting odds on that are pretty high. You, how many stage jumps have you done? I think two, and at least one of them you went down like a sack of potatoes. Yes, I did. There is how many post forty year old birthday? Oh, oh yeah. this will this will be my first one. Okay, so I expect the I expect the need to literally explode like a bomb. Now, what if please you, catch him, everybody? Say, what if you just did a stage dive? There we go. Catch me, people. <laughs> now, if you if you oh, it would be awesome. If you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Oh, we're gonna address it. You will notice that Jason <laughs> Jason doesn't look quite normal. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Uh, he looks kind of like a man who went to a tanning <laughs> booth and wore a headband. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what happened. We were outside. Uh, we've been outside quite a bit lately yeah. playing some pickleball in the Arizona sun, and I have worn... It's warm out there. A, a headband. I don't know what these are called. They're not full yeah. head... A headband? You'd call okay, it a headband. That's fine. An athletic headband. And if you want to see where I wear it, <laughs> you just go to YouTube and you can see exactly where that thing rests on my head. It is the stupidest... It is a stark line. <laughs> I mean, just, just a... <laughs> It looks so – I call this my thinking cap for today's episode. I've put my sure. thinking cap on, and it's Well, just much... grow your hair out over it. Right. Oh, I'm working oh, on that. Uh-huh. All right. Um, one quick reminder. It's ultimate, a good look. UltimateDraftKit.com. The UDK comes out in less than a month, so you can pre-order it 
the lowest possible price right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Our quick question for the day, it's about rookie sleepers. So we just did a rookie mock draft, two-round rookie mock draft, and as a follow-up, the quick question is this. Who's your favorite player going in the third round or later of rookie drafts that is, uh, I mean, this is this is sleeper category here. You're taking a, a third round shot on somebody. Who are you taking a shot on? Go ahead, Jay. Um, so I I had this in here from earlier this week. Uh, it was it was Ta uh, Tyquan Thornton. Mm -hmm. Um, I th he's my favorite, and I've seen him in every single third round that we have been a part of in in real drafts. He is not usually drafted in the top twenty four. Now, in the last episode, he was drafted in the top twenty four. Uh, I think that um. If you're in a third round, he's usually there. The wide receiver for the Patriots. Yeah, wide receiver for the Patriots. The fastest wide receiver out of this year's combine. He is a uh, a pencil of a man, and he was overdrafted in the NFL draft. But the capital, his speed, he had decent production. Um, I, I think he's a good player. I, I'll throw out uh, Damian Pierce as well because he is a running back that yeah. even though he was – not a day two pick, which usually that means it's not going to come Texans. through. He's from the Hu – well, I was going to get there. He's he's from the Houston Texans. And Your thinking cap is is doing great. Yeah, it's, it's a little tight. Um, but, you know, he doesn't have a lot to, you know, have to overcome in front of him with Marlon Mack and Rex Burkhead. Now, what you could have done, Jason, if you didn't want to have the embarrassment of your, your tan line on the show, is you could have just worn a headband. Could have been part of Ooh. your – could have just been your look. We my, never would have noticed. Yeah, my headband gets pretty sweaty. <laughs> Even during the show? Oh, I mean, I mean, I sweat a lot during the show. Uh, okay. My, hard, hard work. I'll throw out a couple of uh, third-round running back options because taking a shot at a running back in the third round, it gives you the opportunity to find a difficult-to-find position. So Pierre Strong Jr. in New England or Terry and Davis Price in San Francisco with Kyle Shanahan – both of them are a shot at a committee and then hoping that you get probably a combination of good fortune and good skill. Sure. Because you need you probably need an injury for year one to see something out of these guys. But both of them have a chance at it. I mean, Elijah Mitchell was not a pinnacle of health last year. Trey Sermon was injured um, and could be lower down the depth chart. Jeff Wilson's been hurt. So you know how it is in San Francisco. Six straight years, different leading running back in the fantasy uh, universe. And then the running back situation for New England is always changing. Uh, we didn't expect to see – I mean, Damian Harris is what? Final year in New England? Yeah, he'll be one and done there for sure. You just need like what? Two Ramondre Stevenson fumbles, and all of a sudden you could see Pierre Strong Jr. get an opportunity. So I'll throw them both out there as options. And I'm going to throw out Hassan Haskins, running back who was drafted by the Titans, uh, I believe in the fourth round uh, off the top of my head. We'll, we'll vet that. And he goes – he is he is now the backup for Derrick Henry. If you look at the depth chart, like is it Dontrell Hilliard? I think it's Hilliard for sure. Do you? I do. See, I'm not so sure of like I – mean, He was good last year, and, and that's how I see the depth chart, but it's still – you know, at the same time, if Henry goes down, it was Deonta Foreman and Hilliard, and Foreman taking the majority of reps. So I think, I think backup. I guess let me let me let me back okay. that backup talk up. Hilliard's not going to be able to step in for Henry, but Hilliard will be the complement to Henry sure. now. If Henry were to leave, then you have a big opportunity. And I think but, that was well, in here, what I want to bring up with Haskins. Dontrell Hilliard is going into the fifth year of his career. And has a career total of seventy eight carries over those four years. Like that doesn't usually turn into production, but they spent the day three pick Hassan Haskins. They drafted him in front of Isaiah Spiller, and and Haskins is is a big enough dude. And like, I mean, he kind of has that Derrick Henry profile. We're like six two two twenty, big bruiser. Not expecting him to be a huge pass catching running back, but Derrick Henry, you know was coming off of multiple years of 300-plus carries. Last year in eight games, had over 200 carries. Derrick Henry is, you know, 28. He'll be turning 29 in about six months. Like, the the clock, the bio clock is ticking on Derrick Henry, 
He's coming off of that broken foot situation that he had, and they need somebody. So I think that Hassan Haskins, especially if Derrick Henry is on your team, mm -hmm. like Jason and I have Henry is he's our, our RB1 for our Dino Junior team. And with the last pick of the third round, we were able to get Hassan Haskins, who I like. Maybe it's Hiller, Hilliard, but I feel pretty strongly that if Henry misses time, Haskins would be the one to, to go into that role and get 15-plus carries a game. Yeah, and I, I agree with you on that. Uh, Deontay Foreman, last year, with Hilliard sure. there, was on a 250 for a 1,005 pace with the injured Derrick Henry. So I think starting the season, if Henry's there, Hilliard will get snaps as the alongside as the compliment. But if he goes down... You're going to need a bigger body than Dontrell Hilliard. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember remember us going through this whole song and dance in the waiver wire with, yes. with that backfield. With uh, the newly signed Adrian Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> Never bet and on. Then it, and it was Deontay Foreman. Has, has Adrian per Peterson stayed around so long that it's going to be hard to remember you, the yes. legacy? We are... We will remember it because once a player is is complete, fully gone, once they're completely gone for a handful of years, then your brain just kind of we. The, it'll be a trivia question of remember when remember when uh, Adrian Peterson was on the Tennessee Titans. You'll go, oh yeah, I re I remember that. I'll say no. <laughs> and Seattle, yes, and like, Arizona and Washington. Yeah, no, you you'll forget all that. No, Jerry Rice was a Forty Nine er, right? You know, th he was he, he played was on other places. Not a Raider, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, even though, what, he had over 1,000 yards yeah. with the Raiders? Freaking Jerry Rice. <laughs> All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Well, there were rumors that uh, the Saints were looking at Mike Davis, but Mike Davis is just in too high demand. Yeah. So the Ravens signed him. Baltimore Mike Davis. liked what they saw last year. You know it. They Whoever is watching... <laughs> What if they had, you know how you have to like license NFL film? What if they just didn't get the last few years? So everything is, you know. It, it's cheaper. You, when you don't pay for the, the new you, year. Because, I mean, what, Latavius Murray and Devonta Freeman. Oh, yeah. And now Mike Davis. I mean, if it wasn't Baltimore, I wouldn't even care about this signing. Now I'm wondering if Mike Davis gets work. Well, this is – so the the signing bonus was the veteran minimum, like $125,000 or something. Um, this is going to be a necessary piece for Baltimore if J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards aren't healthy. Uh, so they went out, they signed him. It makes sense from a just a, a pragmatic standpoint. You need someone in there. I do think we'll have clarity before most NFL – you know, when we get to the fantasy draft season – we're going to know if Dobbins and Gus are just healthy. They've been practicing. They're a part of this, in which case I see Mike Davis as irrelevant, and he's no guarantee to even make the roster, but he's there now, and he's going to be a great indicator of the health of the other two guys. Other three guys. Sure. Just as yeah. tore his ACL as well. Sony Michelle signed by the Dolphins. <laughs> what? One year, $1.75 million. They now have Chase Edmonds, Raheem Mostert, Sonny Michel, Miles Gaskin, and Salvin Ahmed. Uh, that sucks. So Gaskin might be just oh, done. I mean, Gone. Ahmed Cut. and the gas man could be off this roster. They, It's clear the Dolphins have had enough of the shenanigans of the gas man, and they're moving on. The, the big question here is who is, who is like the main guy? I think it's still Chase Edmonds, uh, and Sony with a one-year, you know, under two million dollar deal, likely just a depth piece. But when for all the people who were, you know, hitting the streets, hitting the hitting the Twitter, taking the victory lap of yes, Chase Edmonds, because he got his contract right away from the Dolphins, and people were very excited that the Forty Nine er system was going over there, and Edmonds was looked like the the main guy. He he's got company now. I would say this. I've been a little bit excited for Mostert um, reuniting with Mike Daniel, uh, you know, running that Shanahan offense. He's perfect for it. But he is coming off of a surgery, and he is not fully healthy. This signing makes me question the recovery of Raheem Mostert and whether or not, you know, it, is, is, is this kind of more insurance for the Mostert recovery or – 
Well, I, all signs. I mean, I, I want to defend Mostert here. I mean, all indications are that he's he's good to go. Um, I think it's just trying to get rid of the gas man. Yes, the gas man has been dead to me before this. He's empty. Yeah. So I, you know, Edmund, world's going electric. The the the, the Edmund situation is not easy because. He's not a prototypical three down running back. Right. And so, um, you know, if you want to look at Edmonds and Mostert and Sony and say, well, Mostert and Sony are going to be some James Conner combination, and then Edmonds will play that complementary role. Like, Edmonds will accumulate fantasy points in the most kind of annoying way possible. Like, this committee backfield is not one that is fun to stat out. I mean, we're in the throngs of statting every team out. For the ultimate draft kit, I didn't have a good time here. <laughs> Just like we don't have a good time figuring One star. out figuring out um, San Francisco every year, right? So um, you know, Mike McDaniel will have weapons to use. Certainly, uh, the full schedule for the NFL is getting released today. Yeah, that's fun. Do you look forward to that? I do. I, uh, I think it's overhyped. It well, is. Everything is definitely overhyped. I've been told to like it, and I don't think it's that special. I like it because since uh, part of our job entails trying to watch as much football as possible, it becomes extremely difficult to physically get to a a, a Cardinal game on Sundays. Cause it's like I would prefer to sit and watch every single game on the TVs we got. So I just I look for our primetime games because that's a – oh, mark it down – that's the one week I can actually go to a game and not miss anything. Can yeah, that, I give you a spoiler alert for the sure, schedule release? Sure. You won't like the time the international games are played. Oh, I I am aware. Um, yeah, I do feel like they build it up as if we don't know who team well, you, who you you're playing. When, you don't know though. when. Yeah, but we already know who everybody's playing. Yes, but in what order? But when? Yeah, see, when, see what Jason? I mean. I mean, sure. do you know? I will tonight. Yeah, that's right. And okay. you'll be excited, and you'll you'll take a screenshot of it, and you'll start marking wins and losses. That's probably true. <laughs> well, before we introduce a new segment here, you know, this is news for our kind of show. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a pretty important Sam Howell-related update. <laughs> it's <laughs> awful. You probably saw it. The commander's rookie quarterback. Now, Sam Howell says he only eats chicken, Jason. But listen, he's never... You, you might I say, like chicken. It's delicious. You might say, hey, is he allergic to, right. to like red meat? I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's a thing, right? Uh, no, he's never tried a burger or a steak, won't eat seafood, orders chicken tenders at steakhouses, brings his own tenders to team dinners. If these reports are true, what are your thoughts? Yeah, Mike, when you say you like chicken, now, right. are you really thinking I like chicken fingers, chicken? T like, no, they're I, not bad. No, no, I, oh, I chicken. I love McNuggets. I love chicken tenders. They're very delicious. But that's not what I think of when I say chicken. Oh man, um, here's the thing. I I thought I liked Sam Howell's um, <laughs> film, his production, his age. I liked that he was uh, mobile, still had a strong arm. Uh, he's completely. I I missed the boat big time. Um, I was wrong about all of it. The so fact more likable, Carson Wentz in that locker room or Sam oh Howell? Oh, my like, goodness. Look, I bet you Carson Wentz eats I, some red meat. I know if I'm going to go have a steak with one of them, it's going to be Carson Wentz. Wow. So. But here, but, what, what if I say this? You go out to a steak dinner with, uh, with Sam. Hmm. You order two steaks. You now have two steaks. <laughs> that's, that's You're saying because he won't eat it. Right. I would hmm. say the only way that I would choose Sam Howell is if I'm buying if I'm paying oh, for the okay. meal, then yeah, I'll bring yeah. Sam Howell. Because oh, chicken's I, cheap. Chicken tenders. What is that? Well, the he kids brings menu? <laughs> that is probably kids' menu. Yeah. Which he probably, I mean, to be fair, he's a kid. Yes. And so. I, I don't blame him with the seafood. Like, lobsters and crabs are really just gigantic insects that are in the sea. Oh, they're delicious, though. But they look like giant bugs. I mean, we can all agree on this, right? They are really weird creatures. They are the bugs of the sea. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. But the sea is prettier. Is so it? They, they, I mean, they, they're kind of cooler. Well, I mean, they're temperature wise. Sha -la, yes. la 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 la. <laughs> Under the sea, man. Yeah, I mean, it's... everything's better down where it's wetter. Is that that's the uh, the last big piece of news we need to talk about, Brooks? Yes, sir. Off season going well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, take a quick break. All 
I mean, do you do you have some sort of food take that's a Sam Howell esque that you you're afraid to admit? Uh, I mean, I'm not afraid to admit, but I have been on record many times saying, like, I will take a good cheeseburger over a good steak. You have said that. Yeah, I, I don't have it, but uh, Al Borland's not here, can't defend himself, so I will happily throw him under nice. the bus. Nice. Get him. He will not eat seafood, just like Sam Howell, but to the point where, like, he has never, ever, ever tried a bite. of, And he tells people he's allergic. <laughs> He's not allergic. <laughs> he just goes to restaurants and says, and he's a I, filthy liar. Yeah, I can't have shellfish. I'm allergic. It's like, no, you're not. You're really not. Now, he says that whether or not they serve seafood. Just well, I would of- imagine it's only if they serve seafood. But in his defense, maybe he is. Maybe he's allergic. He doesn't even know. He has no idea. Okay. All right. Uh, let's uh, introduce a new segment. Where's the line? All right, we are asked very often about trades, specifically in Dynasty Leagues, about acquiring players in exchange for draft picks. In fact, on the Tuesday show, um, one of the things I talked about as a tip for new Dynasty players is that there are going to be a handful of managers in your league that overvalue or undervalue draft picks. And so it is an important component in trading, and it's kind of... Difficult, I think, to ascertain. You, nobody wants to get taken for a ride. And a lot of the times right. in a dynasty league, especially if you're new, you might just avoid making trades, which is not the worst advice. I saw that. I think someone posted on our last YouTube channel, and I th- I thought that was actually good advice. If you're brand new to dynasty, maybe avoid making trades your first your first little while just to because what happens at the beginning of a startup dynasty lasts for a decade. So you make some mistakes. It's a little bit more egregious, but we're here to help you out with knowing where the line is on certain players. So uh, Brooks put this segment together and just plain didn't tell us very much. So he's going to Can't be, wait. be introducing this segment. And so I'm going to throw it to you, Brooksy, because you're going to basically put out some hypothetical trade scenarios Yes. And we don't even know which of us is trading with who. I don't even know as of right now. <laughs> you don't wow. even know? No. Nope. What? It's all going to be randomly determined on the spot. And well, so, good, great. So I will randomly determine which two of you are ter- are participating in the trade and then reveal the player involved. Okay. And so, for example, Jason is trading with Mike to acquire Jamar Chase. Oh. <laughs> just an example because oh. good luck with that okay is um, that the first that's just an example or just, that's the just first saying one? an example okay oh. good yeah because yeah. the answer is i won't be able to get yeah. him exactly um so and we figure like i'll i'll give you guys the situation of your teams just if you're competing or rebuilding and you guys can kind of go back and forth until we right. determine where is the line let's go let's go all right our first one is mike Trading with Andy. Okay. And you are trying mm. to acquire <laughs> Cam Akers running back for the Rams. He's uh, about for, 23 years old. First off, I'm now going to present all my trades with a with the drum roll. And so I'm going to say, hey, Andy, I want to make a trade. They'll say, oh, what's going on? I'm just going to send you a waveform okay. so you can play it. All right, so I am trying to get Cam Akers. Yes, sir. Cam Akers okay. is a very difficult dynasty decision. Um, did a dynasty startup draft a couple nights ago. I didn't want to take him. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like I need another eight games of post Achilles Cam Akers to really understand um, what he's going to be. But, Mike, you're trying to get him. I mean, you, yes. you're interested. All right. So, so let's, make me an offer. Let's lay this out. So Cam Akers is about to be 23 years old. He's got two years left uh, on the on his rookie deal. So long term, like he needs to start making an impact. Uh, we have seen at least when once he made it back, which was a miraculous recovery from the Achilles tear, at least like you know metrics yards per carry wise it was pretty gross uh in the postseason there for Cam Akers still got a bunch of work um and it seems like coach McVay is willing to have Cam Akers be 
the the focal point of the offense. I don't mind going out there and trying to get Cam Akers on your team, but he is not a player that I would spend up for. So I would start my initial offer here, be, knowing that in this draft class, if I don't have a top three, maybe top four pick, I'm not getting Brees and I'm not getting Kenneth Walker. So I'm not getting the the running back support that my team might need. Uh, so I'm going to start this off here with I would uh, for Cam Akers, Andy. I would start with a second round for this year and a. Th- and a second rounder next year. I was going to say third, but I know that won't get done. So if I'm actually trying to get this done, two twos, one right now, and one for the future. Now, am I supposed to, uh, Brooksy, am I supposed to believe that his team is middle of the pack? Is oh, that- do you want me to give an actual number? Okay. Yeah, if you're doing this year's picks. Okay, I will give you the 205 this year and my future second. Interesting. No. No. <laughs> I thought he was going to say yes. No, I won't. I, sir, sir. No, no, no. That was, I, that was a look, fair offer. I'm supposed to counter. Okay. I'm supposed to counter. Uh, so you've got the 205. I assume you got the 105, right? Yeah. And you can't have the 105. That's off the table. In this, in this hypothetical, I know it's, you can you can counter with any picks. All right. I would I – would, um, the potential of Cam Akers being a uh, the starter – at running back, at a young age, in a dynasty league, on a great team. I'm not willing to give up Cam Akers for two second rounders. Um, if I wanted to move on from him, I think I'd be. Lo- I'd probably try to push you for next year's first. Um, I think that's the direction I would go. It's it's a distance away. Um, maybe I could throw. Mm. Maybe I could throw a three back your way. You know what? If if I could get. I would trade a future first for for Cam Akers. We've talked we we could have had it as one of the dynasty tips is when you're thinking about a draft pick and what is the value of a player, what is the value inside the market that we create for these dynasty players because that's really what is incredibly important in dynasty is what is the actual market value of this player and that's set by the ecosystem of us of dynasty players getting information from like this podcast that can be influential in those types of things. And that's what matters. And getting a rookie now in the, in this year's first round, that player more than likely won't lose value heading into next year. As we get a chance to evaluate, even if they don't have a great first year. And, but on top of that, their value doesn't go down. And I also, I get the advantage of I have them now. I get to make that evaluation right now where this is just a future hypothetical pick for a player we have no idea who it's going to be. So for Cam Akers, I would absolutely be willing to trade a future first round round reform. If I get a third back, that's even better. I would be willing to do, I wouldn't tell my trade partner this, so Andy, cover your earmuffs. Earmuffs. Yeah, yeah. I, Jason, I would do that deal without getting the third rounder back. Yeah. So, so that's our <laughs> agreed compensation then. <laughs> and and the truth is, I'm not looking at my third with very much value. That's something to push something over the edge. If I didn't want to be in on the risk, because here's the thing, Cam Akers today, it's open sky. Yes. So if I'm very concerned about what I saw last year and I don't want to be in on the risk, then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to flip Cam Akers for the potential of next year's Kenneth Walker or next year's right. running back opportunity in the same boat. Um, and that, so I think that that's... Yeah, next year is a really good draft class. There's going to be people that would make this trade. A 2023 first for Cam Akers could make sense for both teams. All right. And like, I would just throw in where another thing that's was a little bit worrisome for me today, you know, we're, we're, dra- we're statting for the draft kit and i uh, was looking at the Houston Texans of like, what do you do with that backfield of Jason? You mentioned Damian Pierce because in front of him, Rex Burkhead, who was abysmal except for one game against the Chargers. And if you recall, everybody had a good game against the Chargers if you were running back. And Marlon Mack, those are the two main guys in front of him. And Marlon Mack last year, aside from one 20 yard carry, was terrible. And like behind a an offensive line. It wasn't what it was two years ago for the Colts, but it was still a very strong offensive line. And you have games where, like, he can't even, he could barely crack two yards of carry. Like, 
Marlon Mack is further along in his recovery from his Achilles tear than Cam Akers is. And Marlon Mack is still a shell of what he once was. I think that there's a half-decent chance we have Cam Akers and Marlon Mack as the starting running backs on their respective teams this year with a shot to show people that they can get through this. And then Deonta Foreman's playing football still. So We're going to learn a lot about Achilles yeah. because of those two players this year. Because if they both come out and suck, then we're right back to like Achilles means you're dead to me for yeah. running. At backs. least means more time than what? Right. The timeline they pushed. All right, Brooksy. You guys ready for another one? Let's do it. All right. Where's the line? Jason is trading with Mike. Ooh. Trying to Excellent. acquire. <laughs> Ooh, David Montgomery of the Ooh. Chicago Bears. Oh, okay. He's almost 25. And uh, let's say Jason is competing, and, and Mike's a little more on the rebuild side. Okay. All right. Well, I actually, I actually do like David Montgomery's outlook. He's 25 years old. Now, th there's, he doesn't have a future contract yet. I think he'll get it. I really do. I think he's a good piece, and they don't have many of them. Um, they have tons of money next year and none right now. So I think he plays well this year, is an important asset for fantasy, and then I believe he'll get re-signed. So this is a player I would genuinely try to poke around for. So this is I'm glad I'm the one trading for him. Um, do you want to know where he went in a dynasty startup last night? I'm sure it was too late. Fifth round. Yes. 54 that, overall. That's great. I mean, I, I would take him uh, there personally. All right, so if I'm trying to trade for him, I'm not coming in too hot. He's on a crappy Bears team. He doesn't have a future contract. He's a running back that could be near the end of his leash. Um, if I'm thinking about what I would give up in this year's draft, just like what player would I be willing mm -hmm. to give up, I think that there's a spot where I would be willing to trade even a first-rounder in this year's draft. I would rather have him than, say, a James Cook, who is my 10th oh, that's, pick. That's, sure. Yeah, for sure. So I would offer the 110 for David Montgomery. Okay. And let's make a deal. Let's make it quick. <laughs> next one. <laughs> Say yes, Brooks. Who's next? Uh, so if I'm a rebuilding team, I would take that from David Montgomery. My outlook for him is I think Montgomery is a solid running back, but I'm more concerned than, than the – the, what Jason just outlaid here. Like, Andy, what is your outlook for Justin Fields and the offense of the Chicago Bears this year? Abysmal. And David Montgomery, as good as he is, I don't know that he can overcome those odds. And Chicago, with the, with the complete regime change that has happened here, they've already shown we're like, we're tearing this thing down. And we're gonna it'll be reborn like the Phoenix, but we don't know when it will actually rise from the ashes. And part of that is you not giving a running back uh, giving out a second contract to a running back, giving a bunch of money to that guy. And so I don't think that the contract will come from the Chicago Bears. Which if he moves on, he's moving on at a very young age with a lot of production. Yes, with a lot of production. But you're bringing in that variable of that that situation of where is David Montgomery going to go and this happens all the time of like man I Tevin Coleman on the Atlanta Falcons I cannot wait until he hits Jared free agency McKinnon on and the he is, San Francisco 49ers yeah and they're unleashed on their new team and they're just never unleashed like I so is that an acceptance? That sounds yes. like an acceptance. Oh, I, yeah, I said I accept it. Okay. I just wanted I wanted to lay out where I am in, on, on Montgomery that I have my concerns with. I think he'll be okay-ish this year, but I'm saying like for the future, it's it's so murky that I would bet on the side of probability that things could end up getting worse. Like the Chicago Bears next year, I really think are perfectly fine. Uh, or in a situation where they will end up being fine, just moving forward with like Khalil Herbert as their guy, as they're trying to figure things out. And so I would definitely trade David Montgomery for the 110. I, I was curious, Andy, you said he went 54th in your startup draft. 50, I wanted to, 52nd. 52nd. Yeah. I want to see where I have him. I have him as my 33rd overall player. Yeah, I mean, I think this year's going to be very productive for David Montgomery. Like, 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns, 
fringe a, RB1. It's funny. That's exactly what his pace was last year in his non-injured games. It was 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns, another 400 through the air. And I think he'll do that. I think you will do that, and you'll do it like James Robinson did it, and you'll do it like Najee Harris did it in a lot of ways, which is being on the field for every play. And we saw at the end of the year, even after Herbert exploded, it was like, you don't exist. So Different coaching staff, though. Yeah, but the coaching staff's going to like 1,109. Yeah. So, but anyway, I, I was kind of begging the question of like, what's one great running back year worth for you? Mm -hmm. You know, right. You said if you're a rebuilding team. So if I threw the uh, different cap on you and you are in contention, you're probably turning down 110. I'm probably turning it down because even teams that are in contention, it's pretty rare that you have three rock solid running backs. Like, look around your dynasty team. Everybody needs help at the running back position. If you have two locked in starters, you're f you should be feeling very good about your situation. Which that in and of itself is a tip, right? Like go look at your rebuilding teams in your league and see if they've got a running back like an right. Aaron an Aaron Jones or a David Montgomery. Those type of guys aren't their future, right? But if you need a running back, if they're on rebuilding teams, go offer a first for them yeah. and, and win. All right, let's do one more, Brooks, before we do some dynasty mailback. All right, so for the last one, Mike is. Oh, I'm in. I'm, I'm in all of them. I He's guess in all you of are. Them. Yep, and you're okay. you are trading with Andy for this one. Oh. Okay, another little, little rematch after I took, no, we took you for a ride. <laughs> no, we we made a a good deal. Yeah, and you are trying to acquire <laughs> Debo Samuel, twenty six oh, years old. Oh man, both yeah. of you are. Oof. You, both of you made the playoffs last year. You're, okay. you're competing. All right. So this is this is tough because Andy is going to know, of course, if I have a dynasty team, that means that Trey Lance is on that dynasty team. That's right. And I will be – he knows that I'm looking for the stack. So that is <laughs> – <laughs> all right. So Debo Samuel, uh, where are we at the as the show with the fantasy footballers? How do we feel about the situation of Debo Samuel – is the contract coming shortly? Is he going to be playing this year on his rookie deal? I th I think he will be playing for the 49ers with a new contract once they get Jimmy G out of the way. Now, Odell Beckham did say that wasn't he saying he was, like he was going to get traded? To the Patriots. Yes. O Odell was drunk. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it makes sense to be able to pay him when you have Trey Lance on a rookie deal. So I do think he goes back to San Francisco. But his dynasty outlook is very intriguing. It's very sure. interesting because I'm looking at the transition to Trey Lance, if it happens, which it looks like it's going to happen, as a situation that you could be moving towards a smaller pie, a smaller passing pie in San Francisco, a Lamar Jackson-esque situation. Look, if you run the football for 700, 800 yards, I don't think you're throwing for 4,400. I don't think Trey Lance in his rookie season is throwing for 4,400 yards like Jimmy G did last year. Right. So this might be cash-in time for Debo Samuel. Young, number two fantasy wide receiver last year. Um, But you're trying to get him from me, so... Yes. So, looking so at you where, see something a little bit so different. Right now, I have Debo as my number six uh overall fantasy wide receiver. So I do covet him for my team. I think that they're at the age of 26. You know, we still have several years of potential for Debo Samuel. The injury concerns should be pretty real with him where this was kind of the first time we've ever seen a complete season here from Debo Samuel. But I would rather have him than, you know, Garrett Wilson. Yeah. I, Drake London, it's tougher. But if I'm competing, I want him more than any of these guys. So Certainly. So it, I would start at the 102, and I would add in for Debo Samuel. I've, I think we're talking about the 102 this year and a first next year would Ooh, be my starting off. He's coming in strong. To get Debo, you gotta you yeah. got to swing a you big hammer. You ain't messing hammer. around. Yeah. This is a nice thing that Mike does. When Mike comes with a trade, He's not trying to low ball. He's trying to get a deal done. This one, it's a, it's a really interesting offer. Thank you, Mike, for that you're, offer. You're welcome. Um, 
because I don't think there's a consensus, strong conviction at 102 for this year. I think I, I think that there are. I mean, we literally just had a conversation about Chris Olave in the office saying, mm -hmm. "Why is he the seven every time? Why why can't he be the two? Like Chris Olave could absolutely absolutely be worthy of the 102. He's yes, phenomenal. He, he could. So then you have. Drake London, Garrett Wilson, Jamison Williams, Traylon Burks, Chris Olave. So if I don't have a strong conviction, it's really hard to take the known commodity of Debo Samuel and translate it into one of those, but then I get next year's first. Yeah. And because of my lack of confidence in the passing game with Trey Lance, and because I do believe they're moving to him, and because I think Debo ran the ball a lot more than they meant to have him run the ball last year, I'm going to accept your offer. Oh, hot dog. I, if I could trade Debo Samuel for a high end, a top five pick this year and a first next year, I would do that 100 out of 100 times right now. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So, And so if you're in the other camp, you believe Debo's going to repeat this and go put up a top five finish. I mean, this was a player that had a better fantasy year than Justin Jefferson, who is untouchable in dynasty leagues. Right. So if you have that conviction about Debo, here's your path. The wide Go receiver, paint the narrative. The wide receiver two this past season. All right. We we got a deal done. So now you have uh, Debo and Cam Akers. Congratulations. I do. And I have a, just a ton of picks. I must have had two picks next year. <laughs> you had so many. <laughs> All right. Let's do, uh, let's do a little mailbag. Bag. Bagel, bagel, dynasty style. <laughs> uh, can you order fries that way? Oh yeah, dynasty style. Yeah. You, what what like, comes on them? Is it like a? Oh, I thought you were referring to my boy ranch. Uh, I'd like, like some fries. Yeah, like when I when I pull up to the Wendy's and I'm like, eh, can I take your order? I'm like, yeah, you know it. Ooh, They're like what's sir? Is you biggie size? Oh, of course. Put some cheese on it. <laughs> some chicken tenders. <laughs> All right. Am I Sam Howell? <laughs> here, here we go. Twitter question from Andy Rue. First year of our Dynasty League wrapped up. All right. This year, we're going to implement FAB. Nice. But we have been in constant argument about how FAB should mm. be handled during the offseason. Mm. You've come to the right place, Andy Rue. Any light that you guys can shine on this situation of ours? We can tell you very easily what we do. We have a $100 fab system. We do not allow fab trading in our league. It's been voted on a couple times, and I think pretty split. But we have an in-season budget and an out-of-season budget. So basically, when the ball kicks Also known off, as the off-season. Sure. either Yeah. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Um, when, when the ball's kicked off from the tee, every team gets 100 clean not mm -hmm. not a hundred in addition a fresh to what you had bankroll but yes. yeah everyone starts with a hundred the rebuy and, and then at the end of the season at the end of the super bowl right at the end of the super bowl we give another fresh 100 to everyone that lasts through all off-season pickups after the rookie draft there's always a huge free agent push and all those do not come out of what you're going to use in your season i just spent 61 off-season fab on Raheem Mostert, who was sitting on the waiver sure. wire. pre Sony Michelle. Yeah, I mean, whatever. That doesn't bother me one little bitsky. Really? Not even you a little. You think Mostert has the same season with Sony Michelle on the roster as without yeah, him? Yeah, I don't even. I didn't even think about that as mattering. Mm, that's so was a little one-year deal, a little 1.75. That's not a lot of money. What did Raheem get? How much did he get? Uh, I don't know. Five? Three, three point one two. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you talk about the system. Those are two different speeds of yes. players. So if Raheem is who he is, then Sony's a depth piece there. Um, <clears throat> okay, question from Twitter. Mike says, if I were to start a new dynasty league, when should the first draft be? Right before the season starts, question mark? I mean... <laughs> As long as so if it's your very first dynasty league, at least wait until the NFL draft has taken place. If you're a if you're a wily veteran in the space and you want to take the gamble of a dynasty startup before rookies have settled with your information, that's fine. But for new people, do it after the NFL draft has happened. And I would recommend 
as soon as you can after the NFL draft. Yes, there will likely be some pretty seismic player value changes between the end of May and up till the kickoff of the season, but that I think that's part of the fun and that gives you, you know, some chance to get acquainted with your roster, start maybe feeling around for some trades, getting the getting a true buzz off of, you know, when when one of your players gets a hype piece out of training camp and you can see their oh, this player's value has just gone up. Do I want to try and trade them on that momentum or do something uh, yeah, lot, do something else? Let's you make some waiver pickups from the undrafted yes, the Philip Lindsay that comes out of nowhere that helped Andy get a championship years back. <laughs> so is that the official that theme my, song of my title? Yeah. In your head? All right. Andy Bolin on Instagram says, what age do you steer, steer away from running backs in a dynasty league? Uh, we do have an article on the website by Marvin Eloquin who said, uh, it's, it's titled, The Life Cycle of a Dynasty Running Back. 28 is gen generally the cliff. It's it's moved based on you know the last couple of generations. It used to be 31, 30, 28 now. I, I would say that the peak for running backs is generally about 24 years old, so it's super early. But this is less about age to me. It's more about contract. Um, you know, if if a, a player like Joe Mixon um, signs a big second contract with a young team, I'm not moving away from him yet. Uh, but in a dynasty league, when they are about halfway through that second contract, if they are like 20, 26 years old, that's when I try to move on. Not because, oh my gosh, they're just going to be trash next year, but because they might be good. They still hold value. If mm -hmm. I can trade away a 26-year-old proven commodity for usually uh, a, a young, good-looking running back, you know, they're super handsome. Um, of course. You know, and a future pick. That's proven pretty well. Uh, that's worked very well for Andy and I over the last several years, uh, that strategy. Like Zeke? Right. Who's 26? Right. I traded him for Mark Andrews in a first. Yeah, you did. <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny how values change because it really seemed like I very much lost that it trade can, last and, year. And, and, Through the first it, four weeks, you had, were a big loser. And it's still possible – for that to change again. It is if I draft poorly with your first next yeah, year. Yeah, if you draft poorly or if Zeke bounces back to a stronger finish, who is what, the RB6 last year still? He was solid until he had the injury. The sentiment versus the production was tremendous, and that can impact almost everything that you think about a trade. Last offseason, you didn't like that trade. Mm -hmm. Nothing had happened on the field at all, but you felt dumb. I'm a pessimistic fella sometimes. Instagram question, dynasty question, Terry McLaurin or Amari Cooper? Uh, McLaurin obviously oh, attached to man. Carson Wentz, 26.7 years old. You don't think of these two in the same breath age-wise, and yet they are. Amari Cooper, right. 27. Terry McLaurin, 26. Amari oh. Cooper has three years left on a contract attached to Deshaun Watson. Terry McLaurin could have a new home next year. Man. I do not like this question. Uh, Amari Cooper last year, disappointing. Um, what was Amari Cooper two years ago? Do you have those numbers in front uh, of you? I, from I a fantasy finish? Yes. Yeah, I can give you that. Thank you. Um, uh, while you're looking that up, I can tell you the contract. 16. Okay. Yeah, so he was, he was a solid player. Right. The contract situation, uh, 20 million dead cap this year, 15 million dead cap next year, 11 million dead cap the year after that. How many seasons, by the way? Mark Cooper's been in the league seven of them. How many wide receiver one finishes does he have? Oh, my goodness. One or none? One or none? What is it? You uh, may choose one answer. Okay, I will choose one. <laughs> uh, Mike, do you have a guess? I think one. One, yes. He was yeah. uh, wide receiver nine, uh, second year in Dallas. But otherwise. But how many years has he had an incredible half of it? Probably oh, all yes. of them. He is very good. I mean, at that. he has been a hundred target guy every year. Yeah, well, one year was ninety six, but I mean, you got to draw a line in the sand with Amari Cooper in a dynasty league, and and they went after him in Cleveland, and there's nobody else there. Yes, that's. What, <clears throat> I don't like this question because Cooper is is set up for such success this year in Cleveland, and he was, but he was also set up for success last year. 
in Dallas. I know C.D. Lamb is there to be you know the next big thing, but C.D. Lamb was what, like eleven hundred yards and six touchdowns. There's still plenty of room there for Amari Cooper to come through and have himself a big season, and he just he did not. Where so the perception? I, I'll take McLaurin. Okay, I say really? the perception yeah. to me, and I could be wrong, but this this is how I feel about these players is Amari Cooper. Even though these guys are about the same age, Amari Cooper is tailing off, and Terry McLaurin still has a, an unrealized ceiling, and that could be completely are you, wrong. Are you before you speak on this, Jason? I want to throw another name out there so you can talk about all three. Sure, DJ Moore. Right, yeah. Or Amari Cooper because that would be it's the same situation with the kind of like untapped ceiling versus situation. Yeah, DJ Moore and, and Terry McLaurin are very similar in that respect. So much talent, bad quarterback play, and you wonder what's going on, but DJ Moore is so young. He's very similar to Amari Cooper when he came in the league very, very young. Um I mean, you're talking about Amari Cooper. He's had five years. I know we said he's only been a wide receiver one once, but five he's times been solid, he's been yeah. a wide receiver two. Terry McLaurin literally has only been a wide receiver two once, a wide receiver one never. They're about the same age. Amari's tied to a better quarterback. It's an easy Amari Cooper for me. Um, Is that Amari Cooper over DJ Moore then? No, DJ Moore, you know, Amari Cooper and Terry McLaurin are both 26. I believe DJ Moore is still 12 years old. <laughs> DJ Moore is twenty five. DJ Moore is just he, he, he. DJ Moore is also. Wait, he did it. He hit twenty five. He he's twenty five and he's never had a fantasy finish above eighteen, ever. Uh, yeah, he just had his birthday. So yeah, I, I, I still, uh, I still would lean DJ Moore there. The so would I. The, the, the talent and the, the extra like year and a half. Yeah, you taking McLaurin and DJ Moore, Mike? Then DJ I would, Moore. I would take DJ Moore of those three, and I would take. <sighs> I I think I'd still take Terry over Mari Cooper. I think I I understand what you're saying. His his uh, Amari Cooper is an example of like the running back that it like Zeke. I mean Zeke is 26, and yet it has like a football age that's a little bit different. And Amari Cooper's football age was one in which the Dallas Cowboys were willing to give him away for nothing. Mm -hmm. So there was a decision made there, almost like uh, Julio Jones, where Atlanta said, well, it's over. And then, it, so th that possibility exists. Like yeah. Amari Cooper being an 800 yard season wide receiver for a couple of years does exist. Yeah, I, th I think the r real crux of this is, Mike, you said, you know, Amari Cooper's arrow is kind of pointing down. Terry McLaurin's could still be pointing up. Yes. If you're going to say who has a top, six season it's probably not Amari Cooper it's Terry McLaurin but the truth is it's neither the truth is right. these guys are wide receiver twos that's that's what that's what's happening and so I right I feel like it's I, I feel like it's more likely that Amari Cooper has now what the, if I don't want to have Amari Cooper on my team <laughs> then which the, guy do I pick Terry McLaurin okay. there you go all right that makes it easy yeah, it's actually real easy then <laughs> All right. I think we're going to wrap it up. One more quick reminder, ballerslive.com. If you want to go to the show in Detroit uh, or Los Angeles or our Phoenix show in September. I recommend running to the computer. Like right now, just like don't walk. I will say that I know of at least one incredible person that is coming to all three, despite the fact that they are not actually near each other. No. Then they win. They win the. They win the prize. They win the prize. And of this is not a person who's traveling with us. No. Correct. <laughs> yes, we. I am also going to all three. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, did, were you not aware of this? No, I didn't. I did not know of we, super yes, fan. Yes. Uh, we we are very fortunate. It's going to be a lot of fun. Is this fortunate or is this restraining order stuff? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is all. Good. This is all beautiful stuff. <laughs> uh, but we. I think we're going to do some special stuff at these live events too. Right. Uh, spend some time doing some AMA stuff afterwards. Have a little uh, discussion with everyone there as well as the live show so it'll be a lot of fun that's ballerslive.com otherwise i'm drawing the line right here this is oh, the end of the show we found it yeah thanks for tuning in supporting the show make sure you follow subscribe we love you goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.